Let's quickly have a look at this one. Um, a few of us have kind of like wrestled with this because it's like, wait, wait, now that there's other graphs in here, I'm getting confused, okay? Let's think about what we know. Number one, when we look at this, the first thing you might find is, say, the cusp, and the cusp is going to be at x equals... Mm, be careful, it's positive a third, right? So I'm going to mark in a third there, okay? And then you say, oh, uh, another piece, useful piece of information might be the y-intercept. Now normally, if we see this, we're like, ooh, y-intercept is negative 1. But there's absolute value signs around this, which mean the y-intercept is not negative 1. It's going to be positive 1, because it, it has that negative, that flipping effect. So I'm going to put, if that's a third, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to call that 1. You can see, by the way, I've just... That's like, whoa, that's so high. That's just y equals 1. But I'm trying to use my graph according to the particular values that I've got. And some of you have run into trouble because you've drawn with a set scale. You're like, I always use one grid line as 1. And then you're like, oh, my thing is tiny. And it's quite hard to draw. So I'm going to draw my graph upwards like that. And then it rebounds. It has that symmetry about it. Okay. Now, I always know with these straight lines, right? if I get one version here, which is... Uh, 1 minus 3x. The other side will be exactly opposite. It'll have the gradient that is the same thing but going in the opposite direction. So positive, increasing, rather than decreasing. Okay? So that's 1 and that's a third. Okay, so we've done this first one and then you start to think about this guy as well. Now, interestingly, I've got the same y-intercept here as I had for this guy. It also goes through 1. And what's going to happen is it's going to increase, I put this in a very unfortunate spot, this equation, I have to rewrite it. It's going to increase up like this. Now, I've got a quick question for you, right? How did I know that my orange line, which is y equals x plus 1, how did I know that it was going to collide, it was going to intersect, rather than like keep on going higher and higher? How did I know that they were going to collide at that spot? Have a think. Think about what you know about these two lines. You know their intercepts, but you know their gradient, right? Rustin, what are you thinking? Yeah, very good. The gradient really is the key. See how you've got this three out the front, right? That means it's, it's really steep. So you've got this V here, and it sort of is quite narrow, right? This guy here only has a gradient of one. In other words, it's more shallow, I guess. So you can see, because it's more shallow, eventually it's, going, it's on a collision course for this guy. This guy's climbing straight up, and this guy's kind of pottering along at a slower pace. So they're eventually going to collide, okay? Now, because I know this intercept is here, right? What I'm asking here is when is this absolute value, the V graph, right? When is it lesser than, which means below, when is it below the orange graph? And I'm going to mark in, just like I have for my other questions, I'm going to mark in the spots where that happens. Okay? So you can see I want to be between this x value, which is 0, and this x value, which I don't currently know, but you might have already calculated. Who's got it? 1. 1? So that's is it 1? That's like one. When you did algebra, it's 2. Hmm. Now when I look at my graph, right, I'm like, hmm, this is a bit tricky. I, I sort of eyeballed it, I didn't use a ruler. Who else has one? Does anyone else have one? Anyone else? Okay. One? Can we check this? Can we check this? I'm searching for, and by the way, this is a nice spot. Let's have a look, right? Let's go y equals 3x minus 1. Ah, now what's happening for you, you're right, it has to be less than this orange line, but now at this instant I'm thinking about x values, right? So I'm not anymore thinking about above or below. I've done the above or below part, that's the green markings. Now I'm thinking about where is this left and right, okay? So I'm going to... All x values. Yeah, well let's, let's... Is it a real x? Like is this part over here? So I've got to actually stop at a certain point, right? So let's just check the algebra, shall we? 3x minus 1, that's this part of the V. When is it equal to x plus 1? What, what shall I do to both sides? Give me a suggestion. 2x is equal to 2. Okay, so I can subtract x from both sides, which gives me 2x. I suppose at the same time I can, I can add 1 to both sides. That's going to be 2, so I get this. Right? Actually, I don't think it's that bad on my scale. I'm quite proud of myself, okay? So there we go. I'm between 0 and 1, right? So now I can say this as an inequality. From 0 to 1, the x is in the middle. Am I going to include the boundaries or not? Not. Not. There's my solution. Question. 
Okay. Now, this last part, I'm not going to get you a graph. I'm just going to show you the graph, and I'm going to ask you to tell me the solution, right? Here's how it's going to look. I'm going to do this real quick. 1 minus x is going to look like that. You can quickly tell me where the cusp is. It's not hard to find. Have a look. Where's the cusp? It's going to be 2. So if that's 1, that's going to be 2. And I know it's got a gradient of 2, so it looks like this. I know this is a super quick and dirty graph. But now let's think about what the answer must be on the basis of it. Okay? How do I know this line kind of looks like it's never going to meet with this line? They're sort of going apart more and more and more. What is the key? How did we know over here? What was the main thing? It was the gradient, right? So this guy has a gradient of negative 2. This one has a gradient of? Mm, is it increasing or decreasing? It's, it's negative 1. It's decreasing, right? But this one is decreasing faster. So they're never going to meet in this little spot. Okay? So this question is, hey, when is the absolute value, that's this V graph here, when is it above, when is it greater than or equal to this other graph? Where is it? It's always. It is always. This guy's always, you're never going to catch up over here. This guy's not even trying to catch up. He's going in the opposite direction, right? So this guy's always going to be beneath. So our answer for this is, which values of x? All the values of x. So you're going to say, just all of them, dude, I'm done. Okay? Now this, this example is where we wanted to conclude because it's a perfect illustration of why the visual technique is so powerful. Right? How much algebra did I have to touch none. to solve this? The answer is none. Right? The graph speaks for itself. I would actually have to put a few numbers on here. I was just noticing the bell was rapidly going to go. But this is how useful the visual method is. Okay, if you wanted to prove it algebraically, here's how you would do it. You would go ahead, you would solve when does this thing, when does this thing collide with this thing? But you must notice, you'll actually get a solution for this. See, this is y equals 1 minus x, but watch what happens. This actually is probably worth noting before you pack up. Can you all look up for a second? Everyone have a look up, because Rasen asked a great question. Just hold on, you don't have to write this, but do look up and watch it, right? The question Rasen asked was, this is actually is a perfect thing to notice, how do I do this algebraically, right? If you were doing algebraically, you might try and solve when does this branch equal this branch. But watch what happens, something important happens. 4 minus 2x equals 1 minus x. What shall I do to both sides? If I divide by x, I'm going to turn like, I'm going to get hyperbola and stuff like that. I would like to avoid those. Can I do some addition and subtraction? What can I do, Shambhavi? Yep. If I add x to both sides, I get that on the left-hand side. What else can I do? I can subtract 4. I'm going to keep on pushing. I don't like the language of like moving numbers around. They're not moving. You're doing the same thing to both sides. I subtract 4, I get this. Now what? x equals 3. Now you're like, oh, x equals 3. That's a number. No problem, right? There is a problem, a huge problem. Where is x equals 3? It's like over here, right? Now you can see why you got that answer. You got that answer because what you were solving was this, right? But that's not part of a graph because we did the absolute value. This is the danger of the algebraic method. It's kind of blind. It just kind of solves things and it gets answers and it's like, cool, I like getting answers. That's awesome. But you need to interpret them and the graph is your main tool for doing that. Does that make sense? Yeah.